So as I said last week, if you were here, this class is a survey. It is a two-part class, six days in total, about social media for your business. And so we're going to have every day a, a survey on a particular social network. We're going to learn how to set up a profile for your business in the different social networks, six of them. Uh, obviously, in, in a two-month class, even in a six-month class, there's not enough time to learn everything. And so last week, we had to juggle a couple of things. Enrollment, which took a while, and then uh, explanation of the class. And then finally, we got to the big social network that we, uh, that we explored. Does anyone remember that social network from last week? Google+. Plus. We set up and we used Google+, Plus, and I gave you advice and tips and so forth. How many of you since last week have logged in again to Google Plus? Okay, 10 points for you, minus 10 for everyone else. <laughs> you need to do this stuff on a regular basis. You use it or you lose it. And that's the truth because I, that applies in software and that applies in social media and everything. If you don't do something on a regular basis, you lose the skill. Yes? Can I use, uh, can I ask a question? Let's, uh, um, as I understand uh, from the last class, uh, the, you know, the way how we would use Google Plus should, uh, should be easily applied to the everything other, like Facebook or whatever. Am I right? Yes, that was a very good question. What we learn in Google Plus mm -hmm. can also be very applicable to the other networks. Yeah, I mean, I, I tried to, to use it for the Facebook for a couple months, mm -hmm. and I can't say that uh, you know, I was really successful with it. The problem with Facebook, uh, the problem with equating Facebook and Google Plus, is that Facebook doesn't have the same sort of community yeah. feature that Google Plus has that I really like and I think is very effective. When we get to the the talk about Facebook, we'll talk about the the specific techniques for each for that platform. Okay. Because the the concepts do apply cross platform, but each platform then needs its own particular techniques as well. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you didn't uh, get a chance to use Google Plus previously since the last week, you should uh, check into it again. Again, we have to spend time one day on a particular network. Now, the way that it could be easier for you to continue to use the networks is get the app. If you've got a smartphone, there's an app for the social network. You can get the Google Plus app. It's built into your Android phone if you've got Android. If you've got an iPhone, you can download it for free. When we talk about Twitter, Facebook, in, uh, in uh, Pinterest, all of that, they all have an app. So it's not that you have to be chained to your computer using the social networks. You're only going to be chained to your mobile device. But the more you use it, the better. Um, you still might have questions uh, on, on Google+, Plus. so what I want to do is uh, present you a, a useful blog post, and then I'll take general questions, and then I'll move on to today's topic, which will be Twitter. So let me show you this website. Go ahead and open your web browser, any web browser you like. I also forgot to say, last week when I talked about the class, I mentioned that uh, this class already assumes you have some experience with basic computers. You don't have to have any experience uh, in, in the social networks themselves. You don't need a profile. We create them together. But if computers themselves are a bit of a challenge, if right-click is a new concept to you, perhaps you should reevaluate taking this class because we're already assuming you've got basic computer knowledge, opening a web browser, going to a website, downloading a file. You should already know that. We're going to talk about using the social networks. So let's go to this address, pmdinteractive.com slash blog. PMD Interactive is the name of my company. As I said I, last week, I teach classes about the things that my company does for real clients. For real clients, we do websites, we do social media, we do photography, we do brand management, um, human resources, all of that for a real company, real companies. And therefore, I apply in these classes those real techniques. I teach you the things that we do for the playing, uh, paying clients. So on our website, we've got a blog, pmdinteractive.com slash blog. And uh, if you take, for example, my SEO class, Search Engine Optimization, one of the things that I talk about in there that's important is to have a blog on your website. In short, 
a blog is useful for your website because it allows you to update your website on a regular basis, to create relevant content, and to create authority for your website. And those are three important things for search engine optimization. Creating relevant content, creating it on a regular basis, so that then you have authority on your website. So on our website, we've got a blog where every once in a while, once a month or so, we publish a new blog post. We are publishing content that is relevant to the potential customers that we might have and to the current customers we have. We publish blog posts on WordPress, on how to blog, on social networks. That's relevant to the people that might want to hire us to see that we know what we're doing, which creates the authority. It's relevant to the customers that we have already because, again, it creates the authority that we know what we're talking about. And we're publishing it on a regular basis. We've got to publish it before the end of this month to claim we published in July. And regular basis is important for the search engines because they will rank you higher than your competitor if you have not, if they have not updated sooner than you have. So two websites created the, in the exact month a year ago, but one of them keeps being updated with a blog, the search engines will see that one is more relevant because it's more timely and therefore your website could rank higher than your competitors because they're not updating with a blog. So in short, we practice what we preach, or I practice what we preach. Here's a blog section, you can read that about blogging, but I want to scroll down to the blog post about Google+. There's a little bit more information there, a couple of things perhaps I didn't have a lot of time to cover, but if you go to that blog post, you will see that it's got a little, a few more techniques on Google+. Plus. Yes. Yes. The Wi-Fi password, if you're on your own laptop or device, is CE Spring 2015. On the on the network is NCC Wireless. What's that? It should not. It should only ask you for the Wi-Fi network, which is NCC Wireless, and the password, which is CE Spring 2015. <coughs> so that blog post there is the uh, the blog post there is about the uh, a little bit more about Google Plus, uh, maybe a thing or two that I missed, but I'm l letting you aware of that blog, our blog, because we're adding content there, again that is relevant, that is timely, and useful. Top five Google tips, join community, search, post a picture, etc. Yes? Is Google Plus Business still active? I heard that Google Plus Business is logged into Google Plus now because I have Google Plus Business, Google Plus and Google Plus Business set up, and my Google Plus Business has disappeared. We might have to look at your particular uh, setup to fully answer that question, but in short, Google Plus is very integrated with the rest of Google. Google's vision for Google Plus was, you know, the, the face of your company. It would be the social network, it would be the place where your business is locally, it would be where you connect with your customers and all of that. That was the vision. Now, Facebook, through sheer inertia and such, is the largest social network, so it's very hard to dethrone Facebook and Google and Twitter and the rest have tried different ways for themselves to be relevant. So you might often hear articles or read articles that is about oh the problems with Google Plus or why Twitter will never work and all of that and that's just because Facebook has so much inertia. You're still gonna get a lot of benefit out of the other social networks. The specific question that you're asking we might have to look at your particular business to see perhaps if there's something wrong but I don't doubt things are changing. Um, for example, the photos feature has been enhanced in a different way, and I have to kind of also learn this stuff too. In short, if you're on any of these social networks, though, it is going to help your business in the long run. 
Now, one more thing about the blog before we move on. Notice if you look at the different blog posts here, they also have at the bottom the ability to share. So this, uh, this one about the blog checklist part one has some shares on Facebook, Twitter, Google+. You have more. This one about WordPress plugins also has some shares. They've all got some shares, meaning people found these things relevant enough, useful enough, that they shared on their social networks. So someone visited this page, they liked it, they shared it on, on, on Facebook. Okay, great, that's an ego boost that I have more numbers. But for business purposes, this is very important because here I'm showing, and what you want is that your content is spread throughout the web that your content is not just a dead end on your website, that people are sharing it on their Facebook, on their Twitter, on their Tumblr, whatever. And so their friends and family and followers would see your content. You're getting free advertising, in short, when someone shares your content to their networks. Free advertising. And uh, that's something that's for another class really to discuss. <coughs> But basically, if you've got a website and you don't have the ability for people to easily share your content with a share button, you might want to look into that because it will help you in the long term. So uh, any general questions about what we looked at with Google Plus last week? Yes. yes. So when you, if you join like eight communities and you post, to, if it, you want to post the same like article to those communities, how do you prevent it from showing up in your feed as the same post multiple times? I don't believe that you can do that. So the question is if you post the same post to seven communities and someone visits your, your, home, your, your Google Plus homepage, they're going to see it seven times. Okay. And yeah, it will look a little spammy. So unfortunately, I don't believe that you can prevent that you can do the opposite in that the other posts from their communities don't show up on your home timeline. But what's more relevant is you're trying to not show your seven posts seven times on your home on your home profile. Unfortunately, I don't believe Google lets you hide that. So I would be judicious that yes, you want to share, you found seven great communities to share, but I would share them not all on the same day. Maybe share on one community today, post a couple of other things, maybe in one or two days post it to another community, and then another day or two post it to another community, so that there's stuff in between, so that it doesn't look like you've got the same post over and over and over on your homepage. That'll look like a spam site. And then I think I heard a question. You also had a question? How do you have the share button the That's the discussion for another class, but this is a WordPress site, okay. and in WordPress there's the ability to activate the share buttons relatively easy. Any other questions about Google Plus from last time? Yes? Um, is there any way to, uh, you know, on Twitter you can go into somebody's account and see who they're following so you can easily like, build your community kind of quickly? Mm -hmm. Is there any way to do that in Google Plus? Yes. You're able to see the people that um, specifically of communities, which might be more powerful rather than seeing who who the actual followers and such are. Uh, but let me find it here. So if you go, for example, to our Google Plus page, google.com slash plus PMD Interactive. That's the short address. If you go to our Google Plus profile, I'll show you here where you can see the connections. And that's a good point. One of the things I couldn't quite get to. If you look at who the connections are, of a particular account and then start to interact or connect with them, you're reaching an audience, potentially, that would care about what you are about. I'll explain in a moment. Go to my profile for a moment, if you would, and then you'll see, you'll see here that, okay, we have 120,000 views, we have 98 followers. Who are those followers? If you go over to the About if you go to the About tab, people have them in circles. These are the 98 people that we currently have a connection with. 
So what you could do, it's sort of, you can, maybe there's a nicer word for it, but poaching. Um, what do you call it when a business, I think they call it poaching, when a business sees talent from another company and offers them, you know, a raise and if they work for us, I think they call it corporate poaching. So there's probably a nicer term, but here, um, you might also be a web design company. You want to see who is this web design company connected with. If, there is a, if there's a connection there, probably those people would also be interested in connecting with my web design company. So you are able to go and look at those connections and then send a request over to Dora over here or send one to El Machad's or Brown's web design. You are able to connect with those people and then further you go to that company there and you see their about and you'll see their connections. So this is a tactic also we'll, we'll go into a little bit more with Twitter. A lot of these tactics are cross-platform. Some of them, though, are specific to a platform. Also, if you're in a community, um, for the community, I might have to log in to show that, but in a community you've also got Can we look at a community? In a community, you're also able to to see who is part of the community. Yeah, I can't quite show it without logging in, but if you go to a community, one of the one of the boxes of the community will say who is in this community. So again, you could then go poach those people. If they liked that community enough to join it, and your website or your business is about relevant enough to that community, you could then start to uh, you know circle those people, which is a friend request. You could start to interact with those people, reply to their comments, plus one their comments, in the hopes of them replying or following you. Very yes. Good point to always lead back to your business and not your personal page. If you do it, if you do it through your business, make sure when you log in at the top right corner, it shows the icon of your business, not your personal. Yes. I just wanted to confirm there's there's no way to. Focus geographically the Google Plus with your with the individuals that are following you, with the individuals that are looking at the material. Um, is that correct? Um, it's correct to a point. Uh, in that you cannot select uh, a particular geographic location exactly, but. Uh, for example, one workaround is I've searched here on Google Plus San Diego. Therefore, it's going to connect with San Diego local companies. And in that way, I can then perhaps do, go a little bit deeper and see what are those connections. They might be San Diego locals. I know that's not the best solution. But another solution, and this is only relevant uh, on, the, on the mobile device, and I have it here on my blog post uh, nearby. You are able to, on the app, uh, view nearby. So not on the not on the website of the computer, but if you get the app and you read that little item right there, it'll show you that you can see who is posting on Google Plus nearby. So that might be the closest um, for the moment. Any ideas statistically how many people are using mobile apps versus uh, PCs? It really depends on um, the purpose people would use it. But studies show that, and this is very conservative, at least 50% of people are on mobile nowadays. Probably it's more like uh, 60 to 70, depending. And it's going to grow, exactly. So we've got, a lot of us have a little computer in our pocket, and it's easier to take this out and get online than go back home and use the laptop or the desktop computer. So that's a very conservative effort, but I mean uh, estimate, but I'm sure it's more like in the 70s nowadays. And maybe you yourself never touch it, and maybe your family never touches it, but there's hundreds of millions of people globally, 
throughout the city, throughout the world, and it's uh, it's going to be a mobile world, if not already. I think I saw another hand over here, maybe? Yes? So, last week I set up the business account, but I had a personal thing and I had like 30 followers. Do I just now switch over to business and keep entering them and hope that those other people transfer over? Or? They're not going to transfer over automatically because they don't know that you've got the business page. They've only connected with you on the personal. So then you, there's no way to transfer those followers from one to another. You have to, from your business account, then make yourself known to those people so that then they follow you on the business, or vice versa. On the personal, let them know, hey, every follower, please follow my business page for the most relevant information. So it's not automatic. You have to let them know. Yes. And so when you're joining all of these communities, you can join as a business, right? Yes, exactly. And that's what you want. Join as a business and uh, join the relevant ones and post to them, and that's where the people are at. That's where the most fish are, so you can <coughs> catch a fish. Yes? Uh, for example, uh, if you have a lot of people on the business, but for example, like, I don't know, some website, whatever, uh, why it's important to uh, kind of promote yourself? You just want that uh, someone read you or whatever. Uh, why it's, uh, is it like, does it, uh, is it still matter to uh, post as a business or like on the page or whatever? It does matter to post as a business because that, that's the point. We, we can create a personal account, we can create a, a business page, but the relevant thing for you is going to be the, the business one. So you're going to post as a business, you're going to interact with people as a business. And yes, some people will be turned off by a business interacting with me, but a lot of people are not, especially if you're targeting the people that would care about your business. The reason that McDonald's has 20 million Twitter followers, that uh, Nike has 70,000 or 70 million or whatever, Google Plus, the reason that those big businesses also have a lot of uh, activity on social network is because people care about the product. They care about that shoe, they care about that burrito, they care about that plumbing. So you do want to interact with people as a business because those are your potential customers. Uh, I just asked because I read in some uh, sources that uh, sometimes it's more, I mean, in 50% it's more reasonable and it's kind of like more it's more useful and kind of like friendly to the other person to create some kind of, how to say, like mascot for this business mm -hmm. and interact with the people uh, as this mascot. That's that's a good point. Uh, that is a that's a discussion that we have in our social in our SEO class, the search engine optimization. In that we talk about uh, marketing, we talk about building a persona. Mm -hmm. That is, this is our company is going to uh, market toward a particular person. So we're not just this nameless company on Twitter. We have a persona. We have perhaps a mascot. We have a personality. Now, it of course depends on the business. A bank, I probably am not going to react very well to a bank being very happy and using slang and all of that. I just want you to manage my money. I don't want to be your friend. But if you are some sort of uh, you know, web design company that is hip and modern and we're going to make websites, then yeah, talk to me like a dude and maybe I'll react. So it really depends on the company and one size does not fit all. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like this website that I like over here uh, may or may not be relevant to you. Actually, uh, it is relevant to you. Trello.com is this website that I like, that my company likes to use uh, to manage everything that we need to do. It's basically a way to organize and make lists and set goals, and it's all totally free. There's a paid version of it that gives you more control, but I, I, we've been using Trello for a little while now, and we, we like it. It's one of the better solutions we've found. Basically, it's, it's to make like lists. You make a list, but because it's digital, you can attach, uh, you can assign roles, you can set deadlines, you can color code it, you can search it and organize it. And I bring them up because they have a little mascot, this little husky, this cute little cartoon husky. And they, when they send out emails, well, yet another email from yet another company, but the little Trello mascot, uh, husky, He's part of the emails, and it you know it looks fun and, and friendly, and it works with this company. But if it was a financial planning company sending me emails with their little husky mascot, I might not react as well. So it kind of like depends on the company. If, if, it's, if your if your company is more something like official, like a bank or like something like that, so mascot would be worse too. 
Yes. Uh, you could do mascots for something, I wouldn't say official, I would say professional. Mm -hmm. uh, if, it's, if it's still a professional company, you could probably still do a mascot, but you have to be careful how you develop it. Okay. Question? Um, have you heard of Hootsuite? Hootsuite is a very useful site. We'll be talking about it once we get over to, to, to Twitter. Uh, would they be like interchangeable, or would you use both of them? Interchangeable with, interchangeable with Trello? As in, you should use both because they both do different things. Okay. Notice here Trello, this is a screenshot of what Trello actually looks like. There's, a, there's an ideas list, an ideas uh, to-do list, a doing, and a done. And so here, these are the things that are ideas. Get new window valence to match the cabinet colors. Replace drawer knobs. So these are tasks and ideas. They have notes and comments and links and to do check marks. These need to be done. Install the new sink. It's been color coded. Buy paint. Okay. These are things that are currently being done. Buy a new kitchen car. These are things that are done. Call a contractor. Done. Pick a faucet. Done. And these these ideas to do's and whatever are arbitrary. You can make anything up. I'll log into ours in a moment just to show you what it looks like. We have a client. We need to do ten things for them. We make a list. This is the these are the three sub things we need to do on Facebook. These are the seven sub-things we need to do on their website. These are the seven things we need to do here and there. So it's more of a project management site than a replacement for Hootsuite, which we'll talk about later. Because all of this stuff can take time and effort, I mentioned Hootsuite because, I'm sorry, I mentioned Trello because it could be very useful to you in managing all of this. Let me show you how this would look like if you've got it set up. Uh, so I have an account. These are some clients as part of the company. I can have personal uh, goals and such. But we've got different companies. So one of the ones we're currently working with, Heart for the Military. This is our Trello board here. So these are the big tasks. Set up GoDaddy, install WordPress, install basic plugins, set up SEO. Okay, big topics. Then subtopics. Within GoDaddy, we need to set up domain hosting and email. We need to set up SSH. We need to set up SFTP. These have been marked as done simply because the company chose that pink will signify done. I don't know why. But um, you, know, you can set your own colors. I would have set blue or green. But um, you can set color coding to, to mark different tasks. So these tasks in this whole section have been done. Configuring WordPress, well, that's been done. This one's very important. We marked it red. These have sub-items to do. Settings, features, and security. So, so far, the anti-spam options are, are done. Next are admin options, update core features. OK, that's all of that. Set up SEO. Bing is done. Jetpack is done. Google is in progress. We've got two out of two, but we still need to do this other thing, and there's a note. Set up Google Webmaster. Pending. Set preferred site when live. So it's not specifically, Trello is not specifically for social media. It's for project management. It could be any project. Trello showed you that they had one done there for building a house, I guess, right? Buy the paint, install the faucet. You can use Trello for anything. We use it to manage clients because there's a lot to keep track of. Look at all this we haven't even gotten to yet. All of that's still pending. But if you see it here organized, and of course you can then drag and drop and rearrange and make relevant and add notes. Hopefully it helps you keep organized and get on track. Notice at the very end over there, we've got the social media. We've got all of this stuff before that social media. Any general questions then on Trello? I should get a commission for mentioning them all the time, but uh, <laughs> I let you know. And uh, they've got that mascot. I think it's over here somewhere. It's a little... um, I have a question. Mm -hmm. So what about using that for marketing? Like, you know, if you're my client, here's, here's how I would organize you. I mean, is that... 
that's exactly what we have here because notice from this top level, here's a client, there's a client, there's another client. So we do use a board for per client, and then on the particular board, it has their own tasks. Right, so but I mean, just in general on your website, you know, trying to attract new clients, hey, you need to come with my business because here's the oh, um, you. Interesting, yeah. I, I would think that would be relevant also. This is a way to show off that if you're if you're doing that business for them then yeah this would be a way to sh to show off to a potential client that we know what we're doing all right so let's move on today we'll have a little bit more time a little later to talk about google plus again but let's talk today about the other social network i want to deal with which is twitter.com let's look at this address for a moment let's go up to twitter.com slash PMD Interactive. So our company, PMD Interactive, we've got a website, but we're also on Google+. We're also on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Periscope, all of these networks. How many social networks are there? Well, I can pull up a list from Wikipedia that has 200. So you might, maybe you've heard of six and you thought, wow, six whole networks. Uh, try 100, try 200. There's a bunch of networks. Some networks really are only known in other countries. So if you're, let's say, an exporter, and you're exporting or importing from China, one of the, one of the big social networks in China is QQ. So I think it's China. And so that network, no one knows about it in the US. But if that's one of your target audiences, you might want to get in on the social network of your target audience. Um, so you have to do that research. But anyway, Twitter, global company. It has over 300 million users worldwide. Very popular, very powerful. It has a different sort of character than Google+. It has also, you're going to have your own vanity address. You're going to be able to put in a graphic and your logo and a biography and post content. And there are going to be, you're going to be able to favorite things, which is called to plus one something in Google Plus. You're going to be able to share things on Twitter, which is called a retweet on Twitter. And you'll be able to also reply or comment. So this has got 11 favorites, also known as plus ones on Google+, Plus, also known as likes on Facebook. It's got 16 retweets, also known as shares on Google+, Plus and Facebook. And then you can also reply. I wish that Twitter would, would program it so that you can see how many replies on the icon you don't see how many replies until you actually click the icon, uh, or actually next to the icon, and you'll see if there are any replies. That one didn't have any, but sometimes when there's a reply, even if it has replies, the, number, the little arrow will not tell you how many replies. I would like to see that at a glance, because again, when we talk about the tactic of poaching, We'll be talking in detail about who are the people that favorited this? Who are the people that replied? If they replied about something that we cared about, uh, and they care about it, maybe I should connect with them. So um, there's plenty of Twitter accounts to follow to be um, to be to be in the know about social media, our, I humbly submit that ours is one of them because we're sharing information like 30 jobs in the PR and marketing world. Search versus social media. Why are you still asking? 2015's top social media management tools. Well, we talked about Google Plus last time, Twitter this time. We'll talk about other ones. How do you manage it all? Here are the top social media management tools. If you scroll down to May 11th, that might be a link you find useful. If our content is you very useful enough to you, then you might want to follow. That's the point of posting stuff on any social network. 
your stuff is interesting, useful, pretty enough for people, then they'll follow you because they want that stuff on a regular basis. Yes. When you say, you know, about the coaching idea and you want to connect, connect with somebody, hmm. what's the best way to do that? Well, that's what we will do hands-on once we create an account and log in. But in, uh, in short, it's connecting with them, uh, well, it's not, I can't tell you in short, so we will, we will do it together. Yeah. I, get, I get emails from people wanting to connect with me from Twitter, but, and my email is readily available on my site, but I don't see your Email readily available on your site. So well, it's not readily available on Twitter, but it is available on our homepage, on our website. All right, so how many of you have ever heard of Twitter before this class? All right, how many of you have ever set up a Twitter account before this class? And how many of you still use it on a regular basis? Okay, notice how those numbers go down. <laughs> so um, everyone's heard of Twitter, they're going to celebrate. One, one time. One time per month is a regular basis. <laughs> Technically, yes. Better than zero times a month. Uh, Twitter, I believe, next year will celebrate 10 years. Twitter's going to be around for a decade next year. Facebook's already been around a decade, 2014. So these networks have been around a while. They've got hundreds of millions of users. So it behooves us to try to tap into it to reach an audience. Yes? Maybe you're going to cover this later, but what's a good ratio between the following followers, tweets, that's a little more advanced there, but uh, uh, yes, we will be able to look at following and followers. If we don't know what that is, we will, we will talk about that. Uh, I can say in short there, you want more followers than following. But I'll go into detail what that actually means. And for tweets, that doesn't quite matter. <clears throat> um, so this is a typical Twitter account. And 172 followers, up following 106. What does that mean? Well, let's take it to the analogy of Facebook that a lot of people are familiar with. You have a personal account, let's say, and you've connected to all your high school friends and all of these people and your family and all of that. So you have connections on Facebook. You have, let's say, 100 friends on Facebook. Those friends, however, were mutual. Someone sent you a friend request or you sent a friend request to someone. And either them or you say, yes, let's connect. And then you're connected, and you see each other's embarrassing stuff. Now, if you say no, then you're not connected. They cannot see your stuff. Um, so it's a one-to-one -one connection on Facebook for personal. For, uh, for Twitter, it's a one-to-many connection. I don't need to connect with every person that wishes to connect with me. They don't even need to request, can I be your friend on Twitter? they can just click follow and they're gonna follow my content personal or professional I will get a notification that says John Smith followed you on Twitter great let me get back to my coffee so I don't need to follow everyone that follows me you can if you want is there a detriment to it possibly to not following that is um, I'll talk about it a little later but here, we're following 106 accounts and about 172. So, ideally, you want more followers than following. But there is a tactic to get followers when you follow. Again, we're getting ahead of ourselves with some of these topics. But we've got following followers. That terminology should make sense. My company is following 106 other Twitter accounts. They can be people, they can be businesses, they can be presidents, they can be uh, shoes. Anything can have, any person, place, or thing, concept can have a Twitter account. It's free. And in Converse, we have 172 accounts that have followed us. They may be real accounts, they may be spam accounts, they may be personal, they may be people, they may be companies, they may be fictional, Cartoon characters, whatever, 172. That's similar to Google+, Plus, that it is not a one-to-one -one connection. I can circle, I can follow 100 accounts on Google+, Plus, and I can be circled, I can be followed by 500 accounts on Google+. Plus. I don't have to follow all those 500. Whereas on a personal Facebook, you both have to agree to become a connection. 
on a Facebook business page. That's the one that is one to many. I have 70 likes on Facebook. So I've got those connections. They followed me, in a sense. I don't need to follow them back. So what we'll do is we will actually create an account. If you've got an account, we'll log in. But if you don't have one, I'll show you about creating one. So at the very top, new to Twitter, sign up. If you have an account already, at the top right, you'll see log in. If you've already got an account, log in. Now, Twitter, you can be set up for a business or for personal. Either or. Um, like every network. But if I'm going to create a new account, I can directly create a business account. I don't need to create a personal one first before creating a business one, which is what I need to do on Google Plus and Facebook. I need to create a personal account on Facebook or Google Plus first, and then I can create business accounts. On Twitter, I can create the business account directly. So if you've already got a Twitter account, but it's your personal one, you can either rebrand that existing one or create a new one. I'm going to show for a, for a moment how to create a new one. At the very top, I will select Sign Up. It has full name, phone, or email, password. Full name, this is, my, this is going to be my company, Victor's Bakery. And I'm going to uh, type it normally here, with spaces and punctuation and so forth. Um, I have a limit to how far I can, how much I can type there, actually. I think it's like 17 characters or 20 or so. So you can't, if, you're, if you've got a really, really long name, you'll have to shorten it to fit within that limitation. This name that we're typing here in full name is not your Twitter vanity address. We choose that on the next step. Because technically here, I can write anything I want. Literally, I can write here, and it will let me. I will be able to create an account with any name that I want here. On the next screen, when it asks me for the username, that's the one that's reserved. I cannot create an account with a username that's already been taken. But on a full name, I can put anything I want here. Question? That was a question. They don't screen you out at this point. At this point, no. I can put anything I want here. This will be totally OK. On the next screen, uh, Darth Vader is probably already taken by the official Star Wars account. So if I wanted to create any sort of name here, I can. That's why you might run into, that's why one day you might realize, wait a minute, Justin Bieber followed me. Wow, I'm that, I'm that famous? I'm that relevant? No. Someone called Johnny1257 with the, with the full name of Justin Bieber followed you. that name there is not unique. On the next screen, <coughs> we'll see where you have the unique name that only you can have. Then it asks for a phone number or email. <coughs> the reason for that is it wants to confirm that you're a real person. So anyone can create an account, and therefore spammers can create accounts. But if the account is tied to a real legitimate email, or better yet, a phone number, then that shows Twitter that you're not a spam account. If you use a phone number, do you have to do the, the code before? Yes, unfortunately. A, a phone number will say, we will text a verification code to this number. Standard text fees apply. Uh, so yeah, it is going to be need to be a cell phone number that you have access to right now uh, to get your text. And if you do have your cell with you and on silent, you could do that and you get a, a little text message and then you can confirm.
You don't use dashes or spaces? You, I believe you can. <clears throat> I see a password screen on yours that I don't see. Well, I'm on join. I click oh. join Twitter. Well, yes, but this is for a new account. Though. We're setting up a new account. I'm not getting the password screen. So it doesn't say password at the bottom then? Correct. I just get the name and phone number. So when mine is asking for a password, maybe it won't ask you for a password if you've got a phone number. Uh, but in any event, then also add a password. Then we've got uh, a little check mark down here. Tailor Twitter based on my recent website visits. Uh, you can turn that on or off. Now the thing is, um, let's take the example of television. Let's say you're watching NBC or ABC or CBS or Fox, you know, the regular channels, the ones you don't need cable for, the ones just an antenna will work. So uh, true or false, that television is, uh, those channels are free. True or false, all those channels are free. False. Why? They don't let things go out the door for nothing. What, what, is, what is that? Nothing, perhaps. They're really from advertisers. Advertisers, exactly. So you can set up an antenna on your television and get all a bunch of free channels, free channels. But the freeness comes from the cost of having those ads, those commercials in between your shows. So television is free, you just have to put up with the, with the commercials. Twitter and all of the networks, are also, social networks are also free. But now more than ever, they're also starting to have ads, unfortunately. Um, Twitter is going to put an ad once in a while on your timeline. You might never have followed McDonald's, but once in a while you might see a McDonald's tweet. Maybe you never followed that local CPA, but it showed up on your Twitter once in a while. It's not really obtrusive at the moment. Honestly, I don't believe it's obtrusive at the moment. It might be in the future. Who knows? The point is you're going to see ads once in a while. And so here you've got Taylor Twitter based on my recent website visits. Set up Twitter so that it's most relevant to me. Show me ads, show me suggestions and such based on what I care about. What I care about from them noticing what I visit online. So this is cookies. If I say yes on that, uh, and I'm browsing different websites like Trello, uh, and then I come into Twitter, I might get a little tweet from Trello because they see that I cared about it, so maybe you want to follow them. Maybe I saw a product on Amazon from a company, I come into Twitter, they see that, and then I see a tweet about that product. You already see that most likely on Facebook. You have your Facebook on, you never log out, and then you're visiting websites, you come into Facebook, and you see an ad for that thing on the side. Uh, similar to, to Twitter. So if you turn that off, that does not mean you're not going to see ads. You're still going to see ads, but maybe they won't be relevant anymore. If you turn it off, at least though they're not using a cookie uh, to track you online, and however you feel about that should inform what you want to do here. This doesn't affect your Twitter experience, uh, your business uh, Twitter account, or anything like that if you turn it off. This is just about what content will I see on Twitter based on the cookies that Twitter might put in my web browser. And so if you clean out your cookies or go into private mode, you'll have a bit more privacy. So whatever you want there, <clears throat> I'm going to leave it on. You can turn it off, whichever you'd like. Click sign up. It might ask me uh, phone verification. Now the thing is, because I've done this several times, uh, and I don't have a lot of email addresses to, to give it, it's giving extra secure with me because I've used that email before and it says, okay, put your phone number. If I try to put my phone number, it's already attached to another account, so I'm at a dead end. This is as far as I'm going to be able to go to show you how to set this up. I've just set it up too many times. So we'll take you know one or two minutes for you to finish the setup, 
as best as possible. Call me over if you need a little help. And then when you log in, I'll catch up with you because I can't go through the setup process for the 30th time. So does anyone need a little help?
ask me a little help. a little bit different for everyone, and again, I cannot show everyone the exact same screen. That's just because I don't have any more email addresses to plug in here uh, to show everyone. And uh, also, I believe what happens sometimes is, I know this happens with Tumblr, but it probably also happens with Twitter, in that when a lot of people are trying to create an account at the same time, the, the website says, something's fishy here, and then it gets a little too overprotective. I know that when I try to teach the Tumblr class, and people try to c create a Tumblr account, some people cannot create a Tumblr account. It just gives them a mysterious error. Because Tumblr sees, why are 30 people suddenly creating an account? Why is there this spam farm creating 30 accounts? So for me, it's asking for phone verification and all of that stuff. It's not going to let me through to create a new account, so I can't show you every single login process. I'm going to log in with my company account, and then we'll proceed. All right, so I've logged in. Hopefully you see something similar to my screen. If you don't, at the very top left, you will see uh, a few buttons here, Home, Notifications, and Messages. So click on Home. Yes? I've got the left. I've got 
gotten the let's go. Click that and select the what you're interested in. Is that still part of the process setting up? Yeah, that, that should have already been. Let's go. Select a few of those and then continue, and then eventually you'll get to the screen here. So once you've got this set up and uh, we need to acclimate ourselves to the different screens of Twitter, all the networks are trying to show you similar concepts, just maybe named differently, different screens. The first thing that I see here is the home screen. If you don't see it, you want to click on home at the top left. Notifications is a screen that's going to be very uh, important because this is the screen that will tell you, uh, did I get any new followers? Uh, did someone reply to my tweet? Did someone favorite my tweet? It's under notifications. Uh, we unfortunately have to change a setting to make it more effective for business. I'll mention that in a moment. Uh, but I've got one notification when I logged in here. I'll check it in a moment. We've got messages, which are direct messages. Let's say you've got customers, and they're going to connect with you on Twitter. So you can connect with each other privately because everything that you tweet on Twitter at the moment is completely public. That's the default. If you want to have a back and forth tech support session with a customer, you can do that through Twitter. You would do it through messages, the private message feature. My particular account uh, has a, a graphic here, a logo, some of my stats. Yours is probably the very basic blue background with the little egg. You're all probably an egg. You haven't hatched yet. Uh, so what you want to do at a certain point is you want to set up your account, fill it in completely. I'll show you where, so that you don't look like the generic egg, just like every other spammer. As I said, any person, uh, any business can create a Twitter account, and therefore spammers can and do. So if your account is more fully fleshed out, fully set up, it'll be better for you because then people can uh, have more confidence in interacting with you or following you. In the time that I've been talking, you might have noticed that something popped up here. View one new tweet. So something, so a brand new tweet was just published from uh, Bill Bolden. This is... Um, uh, a follower, a following, so a brand new tweet. Here is something from Relate IQ, which we're not following, but notice it says promoted. This is what I'm saying about ads. You're going to see Twitter ads. They call them promoted tweets. And it popped up here. I've never heard of them, but what's this? The smarter, simpler CRM tool you've never had. We'll even remind you to call mom. So uh, maybe I am interested in a new CRM. So I can click that. Or maybe I'm like, I don't want to see this. So there's a dismiss button. Gone. So that's the extent of what I see under Twitter regarding Twitter ads. Once in a while, there's a tweet within my timeline, and uh, I can easily click dismiss at the bottom. So these are tweets and so forth. Um, What I want to do is, this goes back to what we looked at last week about Google+, Plus, as in, do we start to get followers as soon as possible, or should I start to tweet, but I have no followers? Um, I would recommend, like we did last time, we want to fill in our profile. I'll show you where. We want to fill in our profile. We want to add a few tweets, three to five, and then we want to start to try to get followers. So same sort of idea as Google+, Plus, but then we'll look at the nuances of Twitter. We'll take a break very soon, but I want to give you some time to look at here. Go to, at the very top right corner, we have a button that says Tweet, so you're always able to tweet. But next to it, you've got probably the egg, if you're brand new. Ours has the company logo, but wherever you have that little profile icon, click on it, top right corner. Go to View Profile the first item. And you'll see an edit profile button on the right side. So we want to click edit profile to fill in 
if we misspelled our name, if we want to add a biography and a location and a link to our website, it's under Edit Profile. Click Edit Profile there on the right. If you don't want the plain blue background, you can click Change Your Header Photo. If you don't want the little egg icon, change your profile photo. If you don't have those with you at the moment, you want to do this as soon as you can at home. The company photo, maybe the, a photo of the business, whatever, so that you are not so that you're not the plain blue new account. Do we have to format that photo before we post it or does it automatically? It automatically does it. It's pretty smart about it. If you already put in your photo, it will it will then let you resize it and crop it and place it. So you don't have to really format it. Um, it'll do a good job pretty automatically. What I would say though about the little profile photo here, think of it in terms of a square. So if your logo is a rectangle, there unfortunately it would squish it into a square and it'll look weird. So for your logo here, you might want to format that one that it's in a square shape. If you have a rectangle, just add enough empty space at the top to make it a square. This is where you can change that full name. There's a full name, and I, I couldn't show it when we were setting up our account, but there was a spot that it asked for a username. The username was the Twitter name. That's the unique one that only one person in the whole world can have. This name up here is the one that any person can change to anything they want. That's the full name. The username is this Twitter name, at PMD Interactive. If you want to change that, you can on another screen. Yes? No, the vanity name, in a sense, would be this username here because that is also your address at the top. So this one, it's the full name. They might have another name for it. You can call it company name, but the point is that this is not unique. Yes? Um, hashtags in the explanation of what you do, uh, I see that you use some. Mm -hmm. There are like pros and cons of that. I guess you throw, throw some in, not too many. Yeah, so again, that's a little advanced. I'm going to talk about that in a bit. Oh. Uh, so the, the customization that you want to do here is uh, that <coughs> you have this spot to write a full name and let's say I had a company in the real world for 10 years but I didn't get on Twitter until this week well someone might have already taken my name I might be very surprised that Victor's Bakery has already been taken by someone in Manila let's say you know this is global so unfortunately if someone already took that Twitter name there really is no recourse to get it someone already took it especially if someone else took it and they're using it now, if someone took it and they have not tweeted in five years, unfortunately still, it's difficult to get that name back. Unfortunately, because Twitter has over 300 million users, they can't really deal with, you know, dealing with your one particular issue. And that's unfortunate because I do see accounts that are just dead that have not been updated in years. And I think Twitter will change that eventually. But if you don't have the proper name that you wanted, you'll have to settle for something else like The Victor's Bakery or Original <laughs> Victor's Bakery or something else that fits within the space, 15 characters. There's a section for a biography. You have, I believe, 160 characters, which is spaces and symbols and all of that to write a little bit about your company especially if the name of your company doesn't explain itself I mentioned that also for Google Plus and I mentioned that in my SEO class if your company name is is not very direct of what you do just by its name you definitely want to write in the biography what you do we support your success through individualized web solutions such as web design, development, and social media marketing. And I do have some things here called a hashtag. Don't worry about them yet. I'll talk about hashtags eventually. But this is a biography. Now people will know what PMD Interactive is about on Twitter. 
you have a location here and that might be useful especially when you're targeting people you will be able to target your tweets geographically on Twitter and see who's tweeting geographically so that's one up that it has over Google Plus so if you do put in a location that'll help target if especially if you're a location based business you've got then um, a uh, spot for a website. As I mentioned previously, you want to link back to your website because at the moment you cannot sell anything on Twitter yet. Uh, you can't sell your service on Twitter, your, your book on Twitter. You have to sell it back on your website or Etsy or whatever. So you put in a link there to your Etsy or your website or your shop or whatever. You can change a theme color here. We have a few built in or if you know the color formula of your particular brand color, you can put it in. Um, the newest item here, this I, I need to research myself also how this is relevant to businesses. The brand new thing that they've got, this was not new until maybe a month ago, birthdays. So if you're a person, this would make sense to put in your birthday because again, Twitter is a global network, very popular, 300 million users and growing, but it could be uh, abused by spammers, it could be abused by bullies, it could be abused by terrorists. So um, to make it more friendly for real people, they're putting in some safeguards and such. And so for birthday, that's supposed to be uh, also for safeguarding the account. Now for a business, I don't know exactly how that relates. I need to research it. Uh, so I'm going to leave it empty. It's not a requirement. That's a, that's a possible way to do it too. The, the day your business opened, the day it was founded, whatever. That might be a way to, to put it in. I don't know how relevant it is because let's say you founded your business three years ago. I don't know if Twitter looks at this and says, oh, this person is three years old and you have to be 13 to use Twitter. <laughs> so I don't know if that really is relevant for businesses. <laughs> So let's take our first break. I'll give you a moment to fill in some of this. If you want some advice on what to write, call me over. But again, use that space to entice people. If someone visits, it, visits your Twitter account, wh what are they going to see here and how are they going to be enticed to follow? With more that we'll talk about after the break, I'll talk about more about enticing people and all of that. But let's take a break from now until uh, 11, uh, 11.05 and then we'll go on.